حتى ترث الارض الله ومن عليها انت خير وارثين نويت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر تذكير نافع انتفاع والافاده والاستفاده والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وبسنه رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء للهدى ودلاله على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى قال الامام سيد ابن سيد الناس رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا به وبكم في الدارين امين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الشيخ الامام العلامه المحقق المتقن فتح الدين ابو الفتح محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن سيد الناس اليعمري ربعي قدس الله روحه بعد الحمد لله فاتح ابواب الندى ومانح اسباب الهدى والصلاه والسلام على نبيه محمد الذي ابتعثه الله محجة لمن اهتدى وحجة على من اعتدى واله وصحبه الذين احووا سنته على طول المدى فلما وضعت كتاب المسمى عيون الاثر في فنون المغازي والشمائل والسيار ممتعا في بابه مغنيا عما سواه لخاص به هذا العلم وطلابه رايت وان الخص في هذه الاوراق منه ما قرب ما خذ ما خذه ونقله وسهل تناوله وحمله ليكون للمبتدي تبصيره وللمنتهي تذكره وسميته نور العيون في تلخيص سيره الامين المامون فنقول ومن الله نستمد توفيق توفيقنا واياه نسال ان يسهل الى كل خير طريقنا ذكر نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم هو محمد بن عبد الله بن عبد المطلب بن هاشم بن عبد المناف ابن حسين بن كلاب بن مره ابن كعب بن لؤي بن غالب بن فهر بن مالك بن ناظر ابن كنانة ابن خزيمة ابن مدركة ابن مدركة ابن الياس ابن مدر ابن نزار ابن معاد ابن عدنان هذا هو المتفق عليه وفيما بعد عدنان الى ادم خلاف كثير وامه صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم امنة بنت وهب ابن عبد مناف ابن زهرة ابن كلاب بن مره ابن كعب بن لؤي مولده صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ولد صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم يوم الاثنين في شهر ربيع الاول من عام فيل قيل ثانيه وقيل ثالثه وقيل ثاني عشر وقيل غير ذلك وكان قد حملت به امه في ايام التشريق عند الجمرة الوسطى وقيل غير ذلك وليله ميلاده عليه الصلاه والسلام اضطرب ايوان كسرى حتى سمع صوته وسقطت منه اربع عشره شرفه وخمدت نار فارس ولم تخمد قبل ذلك بألف عام وغادت بحيرة ساوة رضاعه صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم وأردعته عليه صلاة وسلام حليمة بنت أبي ذؤيب الحذلية وعندها شق صدره وملي حكمة وإيمانا بعد أن استخرج حظ الشيطان منه صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم وردعته صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم ايضا ثويبة الأسلمية جارة أبي لهب وحضنته صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم أم أيمن باركة الحبشية وكانت ورثها من ورثها من أبي فلما كبر اعتقها وزوجها زيد بن حارثة نشأته صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم وتوفي أبوه صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم وهو حمل وقيل وله شهران وقيل سبعة وقيل مات أبوه وله ثمانة وعشرين وعشرون شهرا وماتت أمه وهو ابن أربع سنين وقيل ست سنوات وقيل ست سنوات وكفله صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم جده عبد المطالب فلما بلغ ثمان سنين وشهرين وعشرة أيام توفي جده عبد المطالب ووليه عمه ابو طالب طيب ان شاء الله تعالى we continue ان شاء الله تعالى التماسا سكن بارك فرم الله سبحانه وتعالى ان تقريب منه در الله سبحانه وتعالى جوز اس كلوز في proximity ان شاء الله تعالى of his beloved صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم seek knowledge of the rasul صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم to procure love of the rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم seeking the procurement of love of the rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم so that we embody the prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم as well inwardly and outwardly inshallah ta'ala we're looking at those who nurtured the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم raised the blessed rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم from the wake of ibn sayyid al-nas and it was in the chapter of رضاعه يعني the nursing of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم. He said upon the dominant opinion that there are three women who did nurse the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. I breastfed 
the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam in that milk gives what blood gives. As the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that that which blood prohibits milk likewise prohibits, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. And so now the seeking of a wet nurse is sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. And it's from those sunan, from those ways of the way of the of, of prior to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu that was corroborated and ratified through the presence of the Rasul himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every single person of that generation, yani, who surrounded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every single one was nurse. Okay, they had a wet nurse, and other than their mother of that great generation. The one that the Prophet Sallallahu in Al-Bukhari, Khairun Nas Qardi. The best generation is my generation, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks about, and Allah Ta'ala says, Kuntum khaira umma ukhrijat linnas. That you were the best generation that ever came forth of humanity, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of them nursed by women other than their mother, and including their mother, radiallahu anhum, ajma'een. And in the three, the mother of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the second being Thuwayba al Islamiyah, who becomes the freed slave of Abu Lahab, Abdul Uzzi, and Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third of them being the greatest of them in terms of the, the volume of milk that was given to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Halima, a Sa'adiyah Halima bint Abi Dhu'ayyib a Sa'adiyah. We mentioned that the Imams Rahimahullah Ta'ala can mention up to another seven other women who breastfed the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who amongst them, a woman, another woman from Banu Sa'ad, and so it's said that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had two wet nurses from Banu Sa'ad. Of them we know, that's Halima Sa'adiya, and she's the greatest of them. And of them, a woman we don't know by name. Likewise, it's also mentioned, as Imam Ibn Sayyid al Nas, in the chapter of nursing, it's actually interesting that Ibn Sayyid al Nas brings Sayyidina Umm Ayman, Baraka al Habashiya, radiallahu anha wa radaha, because it said that she nursed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a dominant opinion, she didn't. Dominant opinion. And Umm Ayman, She's an Abyssinian slave who was taken in one of the raids. As a young girl, she was taken in one of the raids, one of the raids in, in Arabia. And some say she was actually a young girl who had came over with the army of Abraha, the army of Abraha and, and the Abyssinian army. And it's from the, it's in the defeat of the Abyssinian army that she's actually taken and she's why she's sold into bondage. The upshot, regardless of what the origin is there, is that she becomes a slave of the, of the father of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as we learn today upon the death of the father of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib thereby she becomes irth, inheritance for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's a position another position is that she becomes the slave of the mother of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thereby inherits after the death of his mother Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he will subsequently free her radiallahu anha wa radaha that is an extremely blessed woman of those great women who surrounded the Prophet Sallallahu which includes his mother, Amida bin Wahab. It includes the likes of who we refer to, Sayyidina Fatu bin Asad, the great woman, the Hashimiyah radiallahu anha wa radaha, the mother of what of Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib and the rest of the children of, of um, Abu Talib. Fatu bin Asad radiallahu anha wa radaha, who the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Ummi Ba'da Ummi. He called her my mother after my mother. And you include the likes of Halima Sa'adiyah, you include the likes of a Thuwayba. You include all those great women who surrounded the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even up there, the likes of Shafa bin Amr bin Awf, or the likes of the mother of, uh, of, um, of Uthman ibn Abil Asa Thaqafi, radiallahu anhu warda. The only woman we see to be with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, literally from birth to death, is this great woman, Umm Ayman, radiallahu ta'ala anha warda al Habashiyah. Very, very great woman. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about her, Ummi ba'da Ummi, that she's my mother after my mother. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and her makana, her position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clear by virtue of her position with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. She loved the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam profoundly. He said in life, she had the position of a mother. I, the way a mother can speak to a child is the way she could address the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. And her proximity to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam meant that anybody who connected to her was also beloved to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You take an example of, you mentioned saying Usama ibn Zayd rahimahullah ta'ala. Usama, the son of Zayd ibn Haritha. And Zayd ibn Haritha, yani hib ibn al-hib. But sometimes you got to ask the sir, the secret of Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu wa who's going to come into the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
25 years after Baraka. Remember, in relation to Baraka, he's 25 years after, and he's Hib ibn al Hib. And so, what's the secret of what of Sayyidina Zayd ibn Haritha being so beloved to the Prophet? It would not be far fetched to say it's the connection that he had to Baraka because he becomes the husband of Baraka. And from them becomes, becomes the great Usama, the Hib ibn al Hib, the beloved, the son of the beloved. Like we see a beautiful incident inside of the Haram of Mecca. The Haram of Mecca, where we see the two great Abdullahs, two of the great Abdullahs, Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al Khattab. And they're inside of the Haram of Mecca. And then thereby somebody enters into the Haram of Mecca and then they yatuf, they make tawaf around the Kaaba, they go to the Maqam of Ibrahim, Yarka, and they begin to pray. After they finish prayer, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar, who as you know inside of Usul, inside of legal theory, Shada'id Abdullah ibn Umar, it's called Shada'id Abdullah ibn Umar. And in the extreme, or the, let me use the word, the strict positions that were held by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar. He's known as the strictest of the two. You can speak about the sort of tasahul, we can maybe call it the you know, the accommodating way of Abdullah ibn Abbas, and you can speak about the strict way of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab. And so when Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas, the two eyes are gazing upon this individual, after he finishes prayer, Abdullah ibn Umar summons him. And when he summons him, he says to him, go back and pray. You ain't prayed properly. Sure, if you ain't prayed properly, go back and pray. And so the person understanding the, maqa the, the, the maqam of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar goes back and starts repeating his prayer. And so Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas turns to him and says to him, do you know who that man is there? You've been sent to go and pray his prayer. And he said, Abdullah ibn Umar said, man who are? Who is he? He said, that's Ayman, Um Ayman, that's Ayman, the son of Barakah, that's Ayman. And Abdullah ibn Umar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, maybe the strictness of the Imams upon the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, if the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could see him now, he'd show him enough love. He'd show him love, profound love, profundity of love. Why? Connects to Barakah. That connection to Barakah radiallahu anha wa rada'ah was very, very beloved to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the love of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what casts somebody to Maqam al wilaya don't think there's any other way show if somebody khalas maqam al wilaya like la yasil ila maqam al wilaya illa bi mahabbat al nabi except by virtue of love of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam like abdul aziz al dabagh he says because wilaya is of two types you know like our question yesterday the question yesterday about qada qadr al qada about destiny and understanding that destiny there's yeah, there's a um, destiny that can be revoked and destiny that cannot be revoked and Rufi at al Aqlam wa Jafat al Suhaf, as the Rasul Sassim says in Tirmidhi, the pens lifted, pages dry. But as you know, inside the tradition, Israel Mi'raj, the Rasul Sassim reaches a place where he hears the movement of the pens of destiny. A destiny still writing. The hadith seem contradictory. La, not contradictory. Destiny still writing that which can be revoked. Rufi at al Aqlam, pens lifted from that which cannot be revoked. I, there's two streams of destiny in and of itself. Okay, and so here, uh, from where we are, the tradition there, okay, we went somewhere else. What was it? And so we speak about here, you see, the Abdul Aziz, Abdul Aziz at the bar, he speaks about wilaya, wilaya, and with wilaya, with saying to something in proximity to Allah Ta'ala, like destiny, there are two strands. There's a wilaya that can be given but can be revoked, okay. And then there's a wilaya that can be given that will not be revoked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not be revoked by Allah Jalla Jalala, Jalla Jalala ta'ala ta'adhamatu. And that day from the khususiyah of the ummah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, love goes two ways. Like you can reach a point of love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa a degree. But what that, the lover then awaits is to see whether that love is reciprocated. And so that with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so when they reach a degree of love, but they're awaiting reciprocity from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean reciprocity that is Kabul al mahabba that is an acceptance of love from the Rasul towards the one who professes love towards him. That is a degree of wilaya. Degree of wilaya. A wilaya saying to Allah Ta'ala is predicated upon love of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you reach a degree of love with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala yani of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That degree of love, that wilaya. But that wilaya can be revoked. The only time it cannot be revoked is when that love comes now from the Rasul. When there's a stamp of love from the Rasul, so I say he's accepted your love, and the Prophet so I was, he responds, not in kind, because your kind ain't his kind. 
شوف صار قاعد يعني هكذا صاحب الصخاء صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم I love from the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم unfathomable you can't fathom what it means like if, if anyone's ever been loved in life what does it what does it feel like to be loved to be truly loved Danny you what does that feel like when you truly love then how are you going to compare that love to the love of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah Ta'ala just gives you that feeling as a parallel so that now you may begin allow the mind to wander in the valley of imagination what is the love of the rasul sallallahu like what is the love of allah allah what does it mean when allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala yani inni inada jibril inni uhibbu fulana very i love so and so ma ma'na hada in the hadith in sahih bukhari that allah ta'ala prophesies his love what ma ma'na what does it mean the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to say to muad or la'nu wa da'ya muad إني أحبك أو معاذ I love you ما معنى What does that mean What does it mean The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم الحديث رضي الله عنه ورضى أبو سعيد أسامة رضي الله عنه ورضى من بالباب Who who who's at the door Open the door It's saying Ali It's saying Abbas It's saying Ali بن أبي طالب It's saying Abbas يا رسول الله It's saying Ali It's saying Abbas يستأذنان They seek permission to enter The Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم He said to say na say na Usama He says Do you know what they want Like what do they want and the saying uh, uh, Usama says, Allah who Rasulu Alam, Allah is best and knows best. I don't know. They just seek a permission to enter. The Prophet says, I know what they want. I know exactly what they want. And Ikhlas give them permission to enter. And so thereby they enter now, Radiallahu anhu wardaham saying say na Ali bin Abi Talib, the cousin of the Rasul, so in the Lord of the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Imam. And likewise saying Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle, beloved uncle of the Prophet, and we used to what seek a rain through the messenger of God now we seek it through the uncle Amm and Nabi the uncle of the Rasul Ibn Abbas Abdul Muttalib Ibn Umar used to say and so the Prophet now when they come into the presence of the Rasul look 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 the only thing they want to know Ya Rasulullah Man ahab al-nasi laik Shuf I can't want to know it's, it's the fear of love Shatna al-mahabba who is the most beloved person to you who is it Ali are discussing the affair of love, isn't it? It's like in the hadith in the, in the Musnad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. <laughs> Musnad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. SubhanAllah. With the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enters upon the Sahaba. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fajr. And the Rasul has not attended Fajr at his normal time. In time, on time, not normal time. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Do you know what delayed me? From normal time, and the Sahaba said, "Allah who are Rasulu A'lam, Allah is messenger knows best." Look how the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم says, "Ra'aytu Rabbi, Shuf, Shuf, I saw my Lord, Shuf." I can, I can draw hakaik of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. "Ra'aytu Rabbi, I saw my Lord." The Ahsan Sura in the greatest and most beautiful manifestation. فسألني and he asked me, and Allah Ta'ala now proceeds to ask the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it takhasim al mal al-a'la. What is the discussion of the mal'ah, the Supreme Assembly? What are they discussing right now? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, La a'rifu ya Rabb. I do not know, my Lord. Look, sure. It's not the ignorance of the Rasul of what they're discussing, but now it's Allah. Well, what do you know in relation to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? It's like saying Umar ibn Khattab rahimahullah ta'ala in the hadith of Jibreel yani when yani sawid yani shadid as-sawadi sha'r shadid bayadi thiyab la ya'rifu minna ahad yani yani he's not from the city of Medina nobody of us know him wa la yura alayha thiru safar yani he doesn't have the, the, the he doesn't have the signs of journey upon him extremely black hair extremely white clothes yani shuf Umar ibn Khattab Yani is supremely intelligent, Yani. Umar ibn Khattab, that of the greatest minds ever crafted by God. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Yishof. Meaning, do you think Umar ibn Khattab could, has the same that Jibreel? I guarantee you, he's 99.9999999% sure that's Jibreel. Umar ibn Khattab as Ibn Abi Jamra, rahimahullah ta'ala. And this is the issue of wilayah and mahabba. Because they connect. Because remember, wilaya is predicated on mahabba. It's predicated upon love. Love min darajat al-yaqeen. It's from the degrees of certainty. 
من مقامات اليقين it is the degree of certainty before rida it's the eighth degree quote unquote before rida before contentment in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no when we speak about certainty we also speak about love whenever you speak about love you're likewise speaking about certainty in and of itself and so Umar ibn Khattab could have been but when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to what Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab Ya Umar Tadri man is sail Umar do you know who the one who's asking the question was what's the answer to Umar ibn Khattab Allahu wa Rasul wa Alam why Allahu wa Rasul wa Alam why Allah is best Messenger knows best because sir do you want the secret from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam secret ittila ala asrar al nubuwa everyone understand the point here yani what is the knowledge of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu warda and the mind of Umar ibn Khattab compared to the knowledge and the mind of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like you're not going to compare like Sayyidina Wahhab ibn Munabbih rahimahullah ta'ala he said let's take in, in, intelligence intellect and let us convert it into grains of sand show grains of sand upon with all the grains of sand upon the face of planet earth everyone got it it's the metaphor he wants to strike. Not Wahhab ibn wants to strike it. He said, I read it in 72 scriptures of the Jews. 72 scriptures of the Jews. That the intellect of the Prophet وسلم, in, yeah, the intellect of the entire creation, of the entire creation without exception, in comparison to the intellect of the Prophet وسلم, intellect to create is like one grain of sand compared to all of the other grain of sands upon the face of planet Earth. Yeah. This is not the kalam of Wahhab ibn Munabbi, the great Imam of the Tabi'een, radiallahu anhu, the age of the Sahaba. Often, I read in 72 scriptures of the Jews about the intelligence of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We haven't begun to understand yet. What that also means, you can't compute him. You, really, you can't compute the Rasul. You bring the, all the collective minds of creation and creation Bring the minds of the, of, the, of the angelic realm, the angelic horizon. Bring the minds, the supreme minds of the jinn. Bring the minds of, of the human being, of the alamin. Bring the minds a grain of sun compared to the intelligence of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallama. Ma'an al-kalima, yubhir al-uqool. Shuf, akada. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yubhir. Yubhir, be dazzled. The intelligence of the human being is in a state of bedazzlement when it gazes at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. And you want to ask why should we celebrate his birth? Okay, you want to ask. Sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Raftum. And so now the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Shuf. Now, but it's now the Rasul with God. Yeah, yeah. The Rasul of mind. Supreme mind. Allah Ta'ala beyond mind. <laughs> Allah Ta'ala Khaliq Al-Aqal, Khaliq Al-Uqoo, Jalla Jalala wa Ta'ala Adamatu, Laysa Kamithlihi Shay. Nothing is like God. And now you see the Rasul in the presence of the one who he is gazing at. La A'arufu Ya Rabb. I do not know my Lord. I do not know my Lord. And so now Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala bila kayf, without modality. It's one of those sort of now, khalas, be careful with these types of traditions. I've got a hadith in the Musnad, hadith Tirmidhi and others, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and now says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places his yad between my two shoulders, hatta until I felt bard anamilihi. The coolness of, ana, of his anamil. I'm not going to translate the terms. Shuf. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Araftu kulla shay. Look at it. Araftu kulla shay. Now I come into knowledge of everything. What then does that mean? And how is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the perfection of mind? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. And it was, it's not just a perfection of mind. Because it's one thing for somebody to be intelligent, but to lack knowledge. Just like it's somebody, it's like it's it's a, it's a likewise. It's one thing to be a person of knowledge, but they lack intelligence. Like the great Imam Atakidina Subki, rahimahullah taala, the great Imam of the generation of Ibn Said and Nas, living the same generation inside of the same citadel, Qahira, for start, 
the great Imam al Subki, the greatest Imams of the Ummah ever, Taqiyadin, the father. يعني. And al Subki, he has a statement عنه, warda, that there are individuals, I'm just generalizing, he didn't say there are individuals, I'm saying that because he named an individual, but I'm just sort of generalizing it just to keep the adab of the majlis. But there are individuals who their knowledge is far greater than their intelligence. Their knowledge is far greater than their intelligence. Everyone got it? That's, that, that's one thing, Yani. Somebody's intelligence could be far greater than their knowledge. How can that? Raftum, Imam Sayyuti, Abdul Rahman Sayyuti, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says, when supreme intelligence meets profundity of knowledge, you will witness miracles. When it's Majma al Bahrain, when they come together, that Suyuti Rahimullah Ta'ala, and Suyuti here, more so speaking about Aimma, Wurafa Yahari, the scholars, the Wurafa Yahari. I can't think more so speaking about Radiallahu and Warda. What about the Rasul? Yeah, you, you don't even understand what it means to have perfection of mind. You can't compute it. But you know, Ayyuhal Muslim, Bitislim, Dhaqali Muhammad. That's what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means. You don't know what it means to have perfection of knowledge. You don't. But to Salim, Ayyuhal Muslim, Yani Khalas, you submit, Yani. And you attribute that to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi But now when those two meet together, it creates something completely different. Different, that is beyond. Like our teacher Habib Umar used to say, Habib Umar <laughs> used to say about these two buhur, يعني, these two buhur. It can be a bahar of knowledge, an ocean of knowledge that now merges with another ocean of knowledge. And it's not two oceans merging together. It creates a very different ocean. A third ocean ensues that is very, very different. Okay? And hakada with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. And that was before the fact. What then about after? Like, what does that actually mean? Araftu kulla shayin. I knew everything. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he begins to now speak about the Mala, the Supreme Assembly, and their discussion, they discuss two things. Law, love. Law and love. That's what they speak about. And that's why anybody, quote, who seeks the angelic horizon, through wilaya, law and love. Okay? Follow his law, attain his love. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Through realization of his law, that revocable wilaya. Because it's a degree of love. You get the point? Like somebody approaches the law of the Rasul, so that's a degree of love. Every act of the law that you do, you're professing love for the Rasul, so alayhi wa sallama. But is it reciprocal love? Is it, the, is it quote, quote, the law or the law of reciprocity? Ah, khalas. Now, when the love of the Rasul overflows, into al kalam. Into al kalam. Into al kalam. Khalas. It's a whole fayari. A raftum. A dabakh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, sure, that is attained, irrevocable wilaya is attained, attained, attained through seeing the Nabi. When you see the Nabi Yaqaba in a wake state, that's it. Sealed. <laughs> yeah, sealed. You ain't going nowhere. Allah Ta'ala chosen you for himself. How can I see Abdul Aziz al Dabagh, Rahimullah Ta'ala? How can the, the, the great Imams of Wilaya, Rafi Allah, how can they experience? You with it? And again, it's, it's not just seeing the Nabi, but it's after that journey. Shuf, 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 shuf. You get the point? And it can be like the ru'ya that people have. How can you know the world? It's like you can see, quote unquote, somebody on TV, or you can see somebody on Zoom. You can see them. But what is seeing them on Zoom in a wake state, like seeing them real, reaching the destination? You get the point? Yeah, to reach the destination, to see the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam real, for real, 49,000 veils you have to traverse through. 49,000 veils. That's not going to mix. Can yani people can see the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without traversing those veils in a wake state? We asked our teachers, Kaif, they said, Shiddat al Mahabba. 
Again, shiddatul mahabba. Again, the habaib said, somebody could be so in love with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that he could see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before having traversed. Hakada. Masafat al-shasi'a. That, that sort of great distance. And we got the point, through love. But has love been reciprocated? That day at the very end there. So that's reciprocity of love. When you reach the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You, you should be like, how did we get to that today? Baraka. Baraka. Um Ayman. Radiallahu anha wa ardaha. Sure. She's not only one who saw the Rasul yaqavatan in the greatest meaning of yaqavatan that they could ever be. The greatest meaning of seeing the Rasul in a wake state is the Sahaba. There's no greater meaning than that. None. You can mention the greats all the way to Yawm Al-Qiyamah from the Umar of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they're certainly great. And the greatness of those people, they see the Rasul Yaqadatan. You can mention them, but do not compare them to the Sahaba. Don't. Don't compare them to the Sahaba. Radiallahu anhu wa radahim. They saw the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yani in, from, the highest vantage point a human being can ever see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam creation can ever see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the only one, Allah, who sees it from a completely different vantage point. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hakad al Sahaba. Then, all eyes are not the same, yani. All eyes are not the same. And at the Rasul, you know, we hear that in sort of in colloquial ghetto language, all eyes on me. That's give that to the Rasul. Uh, uh, the Rasul. Rasul is all eyes on me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But not, you don't get the point. All eyes were created equal, but some are more equal than others, isn't it? Sure, if there's a continuum of perfection of sight amongst those Sahaba, radiallahu anhum wa radahum. Tell me eyes that are greater than the eyes of Barakah. There are. There are eyes greater than, ba than Barakah, but they are certainly great eyes at the very height of that continuum of seeing and beholding the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi She loved the Rasul, it was reciprocated. It was reciprocated, Yadi. That woman profound, Yadi, like she really profound. And there are many profound people of the Sahaba that when you approach them, you can forget that there's such a thing called existence, Yadi. These people, Yadi, they draw you into their world, Yadi. And she is certainly one of them, radiallahu anha wa radaha. She's with the Rasul from birth to death. Tell me who's with the Rasul from birth to death. Bismillah. Tell me who is with the Rasul from birth to death. And we're not, not just with the Rasul, yeah, because you can be saying Abbas, or this, you can say that. I mean, with him. They virtually never left his side from birth to death. You're going to struggle for anyone other than this great woman. Struggle. Allah alam the fakir can't think of anybody. Can't think of anybody in the outward realm who was with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compared to that. That woman, great, Yadi, great. When, when the Prophet passes away, Abu Bakr, who Abu Bakr go to visit? Umar ibn Khattab, who Umar go to visit? Who they go to visit? Baraka. <laughs> All the people they could have chosen within the Manawara, the Shaykhan, Ta'al, come, let's go and sit with Baraka. Let's go and sit with Baraka. Look at the name, Radiallahu anha wa radaha. And we haven't begun yet, yani. And look at the love she had for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Love. So we understand it. And yani, the people still celebrate the birthday or not. These people would, would yani, yani, drink his urine or not. Shuf did at another level of connection, yani. You're still thinking about whether we celebrate the day or not, yani. Baraka anha wa radaha. She drank the urine of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Drank it. And she didn't leave a drop, Yani. She did not leave a drop, Radiallahu anha wa radaha. When the Rasul comes and finds his utensil empty. Prophet used to have, he had, used to have this utensil which he'd place under one of his elevated beds. He'd have an elevated bed in some of the houses of the wives. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he'd have this sort of utensil that if need be, this Rasul Sallallahu wa sallam would relieve himself inside of his utensil in the midst of the night, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then by the morning time, the Prophet Sallallahu would take it, Yani Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Rasul, you read, you read, Yani, the Prophet would throw it out, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sure, that morning, blessed morning it was. 
the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes to the utensil the utensil empty <laughs> the utensil empty yani that's an empty look at the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was also like well, who did this go and ask you just send the people baraka <laughs> baraka baraka so sure. you got the point like you know, you, know, you actually think you mean subhanallah as well as subhanallah yeah. Just imagine the Rasul وسلم, saying Baraka and he means you. You get my point? Just like the name Baraka. Just imagine the Rasul calling for Baraka and you're the Baraka he's calling for. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, Rasul, I drank it. I drank it. She told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, so your stomach huh, will never be afflicted by any ailment whatsoever. By any. Yani, shuf. What, what does he mean by that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Don't, don't start thinking about tummy aches. Remember the nafs, the root of the nafs is in the gut. Remember the Rasul, that the tongue is a tongue of purity, a tongue, a tongue of spirituality there. If the Rasul says that your, your gut is pure, what else do you need? Remember, every time Allah Ta'ala, Imam Ghazali Rahimullah Ta'ala speaks of the purification of the nafs, which is rooted in, inside of the gut, yani, jala, 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 ta, every time Allah Ta'ala speaks about the purification, Imam Ghazali Rahimullah Ta'ala said it's only one thing that is purified, the nafs that connects to the gut. That's it. Look, Shuf, the Rasul says, the Blessed woman, again, I know the blessed people who surrounded the Rasul sallallahu alayhi It said she was of those who breastfed the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But she saying is of those who raised the messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. She's certainly one of those. Radiallahu anha wardaha. Radiallahu anha wardaha in a tradition, Ibn Hajar, al-Isqalani rahimahullah ta'ala, in his isaba fi tamyiz al-Sahaba. He mentioned in the Bible, he says, Tabaraka radiallahu anha wardaha, when she made hijrah. That she made hijrah wardaha, fasting. When she makes hijrah from Mecca to Medina, the migration, she's fasting. Anha wardaha, one. And the second thing, Bila Zad, she carries no Zad. She has no provision with her whatsoever. In her own words, I, when Maghrib and the sun set, I had nothing to break my fast. Nothing. And then the sun set. And she says, thereby Allah lowered down a bucket from the heavens. A bucket came out of the heavens, I took hold of it, and I drank from it, and I was never thirsty thereafter, ever. That's what's called irrevocable wilayah. That's <laughs> irrevocable, yani. Yishuf, radiallahu anha wardaha. Blessed, a woman blessed, radiallahu anha wardaha. Is she of those who said that, who said that breastfed the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Likewise, he also mentioned three women from Banu Sulaim. That there was three women from Banu Sulaim who said, who breastfed the Rasul he said once that uh, uh, Halima Sa'idiyah passing with the Prophet and the three women from Banu Sulaim. Banu Sulaim, I mean the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallama, you know, I'm the son of the Atikas and I rewired the Atikas from Sulaim. Of the four mothers of the Rasul Atika, Adi Atikas, they're from what the tribe of Sulaim. Some say three of them. Yeah, it's three four mothers from the tribe of Sulaim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the irony, three women huh, from Sulaim, yani, when they see the Rasul, they take hold of the Rasul. And then their breasts overflow with milk. And then the Rasul starts of drinks from it. Yani. Some say three women. We don't know their names. Yani. Leave their names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they were the source of nourishment, quote unquote, in the world of intermediary for our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahihi wa sallama. Yani they mention others, they mention, they mention two others. Yani one, one of them, yani Um Burda. You say Um Burda, yani her name was Khawla bint Munzir from Banu Najjar. Okay, they mention that she breastfed the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa although the Imams rahimahullah ta'ala usually reject, reject that, absolutely reject it. She's the one they absolutely reject, yani. They believe that's, that's, that's a, what's called tashif inside the dua, inside the transmission, in that she she um, she breastfed the grandchildren, Hassan Hussein and others. Yani. So she is a murdi'a, but not for the Prophet You get the point? Right? So when it says, like she breastfed the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the language can be, and she breastfed the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's going to be, well, 
how did she breastfeed the Rasul? It's going to be clear she didn't breastfeed the Rasul. So that's what you call in, it's called the Hadd. So you understand the Hadd there's an ellipse. Well, she breastfed the Rasul, but she breastfed the grandchildren of the Rasul. That way, there is understood. Contextually, you can understand that. So, but she is mentioned from amongst them. Her name is Umburda Khawla bint al Munzir, and Najariya from the same clan as Salma bin Amr, from Banu Najjar of the Ansar. And, and the last one is what is, is Um Farwa. Um Farwa. Okay, so Um Farwa, and that there is pretty strong, the Um Farwa. And he breastfed the Prophet Um Farwa. And so they're the ten who were mentioned, ten of who were mentioned that breastfed the Rasul But three khalas, we have absolute, in a sense, certainty they breastfed the Rasul of his mother, Thuwaiba and Halima, the supreme nature of the Rasul the supreme giver of milk. Remember her name? Halima Lam Meem linguistically relates to Lamba milk. Okay, linguistically, it sort of it relates, yani. but in specific language, it is Hilm, is one of the greatest insignias of the prophecy of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, clemency. And the name Halima means the receiver of clemency, the giver of clemency. That's what the name means. Remember the name of Allah Ta'ala, Al-Halim. Allah is Al-Halim. That is the giver of clemency, the clement way. And that being one of the most distinct ways to recognize the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bisifat. This refat, I'm saying Halima Sa'adiyya is certainly quoted the horizontal, the earthly, the, in the world of causation intermediary, by virtue of which the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received an overabundance of hilm. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. In degrees. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. And beware of a stupid net worth. Step of a stupid wetness because milk bequeaths in the Lebanon Yurith, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, look, show of Tarbiya, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi and saying Halima and Saidiya, Ya Rabbi, if I take to who for Abdihi, Wali Hila Lula, Warakihi, what had about Hila Rida be Hakihi. Any show, my Lord, since you gifted him, then gift him long life, elevate him and raise him to lofty heights. And refute the falsehoods of enemies by his right. Whose words are those? Halima's words. They're the words she would sing to the Prophet as a child. But look at the words. Ya Rabb. Who is she speaking to? And who is she addressing? So we understand this, yani. Who is she addressing? Remember Halima Sa'adiya, the Imam say she was chosen by God. Make you a minute, Imam Suhaili, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Imam Suhaili, he mentioned in his commentary about Ibn Hisaq there, he says that Halim al Sa'adiya was chosen by God to raise, to nurture the Prophet. Make sure we understand that. And if she's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala knows best where he places his message. And he knows best with whom he places his message and why he does it. And look at it, Ya Rabbi ib'ataytu fa abqihi. My Lord, since you gifted him, then gift him long life. Remember, Abqihi, you can translate as gift him God long life, or if you really want to look at the word in and of itself, al baqa Grant him baqa baqa And you students of theology, you understand, a baqa is min sifa to salbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah lahu sifat al baqa Allah Ta'ala has that sifa. And hakada, yani shuf. It's not giving the sifa of God. We're Muslims, we're Muahideen. You understand that, yani? But we're saying shuf that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam, a long life, eternal life in goodness. That is eternal life in goodness, Allah alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. No two Muslims going to argue over that. There's no life greater than the life of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. His life yani, is before the life of the universe. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. And what then about the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam thereafter? Our deen, yani. There's a hadith in the Musnad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Just so we get it. There's a hadith in the Musnad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Where the Prophet sallallahu is speaking to whom? The son of Baraka. Usama. He's addressing Usama. And the Prophet وسلم, is speaking to Usama, who's a teen, yani. he's a teen. And he's speaking to Usama, and he's telling Usama about the awliya. 
the people of God. And he tells the Prophet is telling Usama that these people, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by their existence, the world exists. By virtue of their existence. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seizes them, Allah destroys the entire universe. Make sure we understand that. <laughs> that things exist by virtue of the existence of great things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure, yani, you get into philosophy here, you know, in one of the theories of the philosophies of philosophy, they, that things only exist by virtue of presence and sight. Like I can look into this room and it exists. Why? Because of the sight of the observer. But what I do not see, does it really have tangible existential reality? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna start speaking. You're like, they don't even know where their heads are yet. You get the point, but sure, if you want to sort of understand something, what does that mean? Is that yani, yani, uh, Allah Alam, difficult for somebody to understand that the contingency of creation is contingent upon other aspects of creation inside the world of intermediary. Things exist in creation by virtue of the existence of other entities in creation. Do you understand that? Yani, creation exists ultimately because of the existence of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. wasallama. Everyone got it? Period. Period. Yani, there is no such thing as Jannah without the Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa No such thing whatsoever as Jannah without the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It could not exist without the existence of the Rasul himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no, for some of us may be difficult to fathom, but truth doesn't rest upon whether we fathom it or not. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Remember, people, that is the furthest extent of their knowledge. But look what Allah Ta'ala says. You know, whatever we believe, whatever we fathom, with whatever mind we've got, whatever intelligence that we've got, شوف, it does not affect the truth one iota. It doesn't affect reality. How can Allah, Allah, Allah says that? Shay'a. He says, Jalla Jalla wa ta'ala ta'adhamatu. Ya Rabbi ib ataytahu fa abqi. Just imagine. Hey, Just imagine. Like the, these are the words. Remember, words. Yani, you know, look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it, 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 it relates to the dream world. But, yani, al ibra bi umum al lafal. La bi khusus al sabah. What we take into consideration is the general connotation, the general application of the terms used, not the specific circumstances in which those words first came about. That is the principle in our religion. And so, like, look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ida rubbira waqa'a. Oh, that statement's are powerful then. If you only but knew. Ida rubbira waqa'a. You know what that means? When it's expressed, it comes to pass. Words are powerful, yani. Remember, like, the, like the, 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 the school, yani, people can debate, but the school of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal in theology, they say everything exists by the word. It's mere bain al kaf wa noon. Everything exists by virtue of kun, by the word, literally. They say literally. Everything exists by the word of God. That's the sirr of creation. And the human being who, as the Prophet Sallallahu in Bukhari, he says, Inna Allah khalaqa Adam ala suratih. Very Allah ta'ala created Adam in his, in Allah's image. Be careful of the tradition in and of itself. From the meanings, we have the semblance, the human being, the meanings, the semblance of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there's ever, ever, ever a meaning to the creative power or process that the human being has, you find it in the words the human being uses. The words, the words you utter, the words you articulate. And what we're saying here, only for context, this is nurturing now, how children are raised. And especially the mother, she has to be careful of what she says. Careful, yani. And especially in that, in the, in the critical years, those first five years of the child, yani. 
Look, look at the tradition inside of, in, inside of him, a Tirmidhi there, of, 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 of a Bukhari, and Tirmidhi, of, of a Juraj, and the Sahib of Juraj, in, in the irony Sahib of Juraj, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that no child spoke from the cradle, illa fala, except three. One of them who, look, spoke, spoke, that's what I want to focus on. One of them whom, Sahib of Juraj, isn't it? Men Juraj, Men Juraj, who's Juraj? Juraj Abid, worshiper from Banu Israel. He loves to worship, loves Allah Ta'ala, loves to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so focused upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, like nothing else exists. And he builds, mashallah Ta'ala, Khalwa, a place of spiritual retreat, of seclusion with Allah Ta'ala, so that he can just worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You know, with the Fakhir, I am telling you, there's no greater romance than that. That is romantic. That they are romantic. That you realize you've been created to worship Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what you do. Yani, in the most formal, literal, profound sense, you just worship Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, that they are romance, yani. That they are romantic. Now, some people, romance for them is being upon a beach. <laughs> you get the point of being on the beach, they can see the sunset. As they gaze into the vast ocean, nah, it's to be in Khalwa, Allahu Akbar, isn't it? It's to be in Khalwa, Allahumma salli ala, shuf yari. From, from the day you're born to the day you die. It's like, I, I'll give you a, beautiful, a romantic statement. Here's a beautiful romantic statement. A person comes to one of the prophets of old, and he says, I hear, yani, I hear, and obviously it's come from the prophet himself in question, that at the end of time, there's an ummah that will live between 16 and 17. They're going to live between 60 and 70 years. How could I hear? Is that true? And the prophet in question says, yes, it's true. Of course he knows. Because he teaches that by the dictates of faith. As the ummah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tilka ummah Ahmed. Tilka ummah to Ahmed. Of course, it's true. This is romance now. He says, subhanallah. How he say subhanallah? If I lived in that time, I'd make my life one sajda. <laughs> one sajda. There I was born, I'm prostrate. Azrael, come and take me like that. One sajda. Ain't that romantic? Like, where are those, Yanni? Like, where are those? Where are they, Yanni? Can you imagine yourself in the 80 days of Mecca and you hit Hira? Look at the Rasul. The cave of Hira. Yakhlu. In solitude, he loves it. <laughs> loves it. And Allah Ta'ala printed upon his heart. Day later, week later, month later, year later, you, you revisit the Mount of Hira. And here's Abu Bakr. There's Ali ibn Abi Talib. They're saying Zubair ibn Awam carrying his father's sword there into the mountains of Hira. In the mountains of Hira. You know, some people in, inside of the COVID, they're in the COVID, they're gonna try and tell, they're gonna try and quote. Heck, they're gonna try and quote. And Allah Ta'ala Alam, yani people may not like the statement, but they're gonna try and quote an incident. You believe in some of the book, but you ignore part other parts. They're gonna quote Sayyidina Ahmad ibn As in the Amwas. In the Amwas, in the, in, the, in the Great Plague, that sort of, in the age of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, that took the life of many a Sahaba, 70,000 people, they said, died inside of the Amwas. Shuf, they're off them, and they're going to quote Sayyidina Umar ibn As, Umar ibn As, you know, to try and justify, quote unquote, yani, um, government policy. Yeah? Who else are you justifying? You're, you ain't justifying Deen. Oh, the government that came out with the edict, oh no, oh, we can find in our book, well, you know, if you want to find it in our book or in our tradition, finish the tradition. So they're going to say, Sayyidina Amr ibn As, Allah Ta'ala says, Tafarraku fil jibal. Everybody go into sort of self-isolation in the mountains. Toyib, and I mean this. If you want to quote Amr ibn As, go into self-isolation in the mountains. When, when Boris Johnson is telling you to go into self-isolation of the mountains, then maybe you can quote Sayyidina Amr ibn As, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. 
But don't tell us what Sayyidina Amr ibn As ta'ala commanded first and foremost is what Western governments are likewise commanding. Don't tell us it's the same thing. Don't, don't please, Yari. Sure, especially when we're speaking as we are now from the Bab of Tarbiyah. Yani, your house raises awliya? Is that what your house does? You, 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 when you go, you know, you, khalas, you had six months to try. So if you know whether you've been in self-isolation now, you've seen the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hmm? Talk, raise your hand, Yani. And you asked the one who uttered that statement, Yani, who's going to do that shof. Yaqi, ra'ayt al-Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqaba. Have you seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqaba? So that you can quote Sayyidina Abdul As Hakada. Be careful about your quote, Yani. You bring in your mind, quote and quote, to the, to the Sahaba, Radiallahu anhu wardahim. Like Sayyidina Abdul As, Radiallahu anhu wardah. Why didn't he say, Tafarraku fil buyut? Why didn't he say that? Everyone go to your houses, lock your doors. They had houses. Why did he send them to the mountains? Then finish the statement. Why don't you quote when Mu'ad heard what Amr said? What did Mu'ad say? Are you going to try and compare Amr ibn As to Mu'ad ibn Jabal? Now, don't say you're trying to compare Sahabi. No, yet yeah, we are. We, yet yeah, we are. That's exactly what we're doing. This is a continuum with the Sahaba. Sure, if you, you, you're going to try and compare Amr ibn As to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, be careful there if that's what you're trying to say. I mean, words supersede other words. There is leadership among the Sahaba. If, 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 oh, well, that's a big statement. Toyib, Toyib, let us quote Sharah Bil bin Hassana. Remember, Sharah Habib bin Hassan, Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, who's there in the Amwas. When he hears what Amr ibn As says, just like Ma'ad ibn Jabal, Sharah Habib bin Hassan, radiallahu anhu, where he his literal words, the literal Sharah Habib. He said, you see, I was a companion of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Amr ibn As was more astray than the donkey of Banu Sahim. Meaning, he's trying to show you authority here. He's not insulting Amr ibn As. He's trying to show you authority here. And Sharah Habib bin Hassana, he says, what is occurring now is a mercy from Allah Ta'ala. That's how you see it. It's rahmah min Allah. One. Two. What does he say? Brother Allah warda. It's da'wah nabi This is the dua of the Rasul. The Rasul prayed for this. Not against this. He prayed for it. Yet he, Allah Alam, prayed for it. The Rasul Sallallahu for our information, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, Halak Ummati, my Ummah will die through viruses. The destruction of this Ummah is through the virus. The pandemic, the epidemic, the plague, whatever you want. You get the point. And then Sayyidina Sharah Habil, just like Sayyidina Mu'ad, when they finish, this is the death of the Salihin min qablikum. This is how the greats die. This is their death. That their deen. It's deen, yani. And Allah we're trying to take deen from somewhere else and from someone else, yani. Shuf, that they know. And they've taught it. Rufi'at al-Aqlam wa Jaffat al-Suhuf. Radiallahu anhum wa ardahum. Ida ubbira waqa. Words matter. They matter. Ever got the point? They matter. And in Tarbiya, they matter. Juraj now. Straight a bit from Juraj, you know. Juraj got his khalwa. Shuf. Who come knocking on his khalwa? His mother. His mother. His mother wants Juraj. She needs some help. His mother. So Juraj now, he says, Allah or my mother, do I continue worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do I answer the call of my mother? You hear know that? It's, it's profound that, isn't it? Like, what do you choose there? Let's give an example, maybe for many of us, a bit closer to home. Yani. What is that? Saying, oh, wait, so me. Do I wait in Medina for the Prophet وسلم, to return? Or do I go and answer the call of my mother? Saying, oh, wait, chose his mother. And he's not a Sahaba. Sure. He chose his mother. And he's not a Sahaba. You haven't got the point? He chose his mother, and he's not a Sahaba. Radiallahu anhu warda. Juraj there chose his worship, and not his mother. So now his mother, when he doesn't answer her call, look at his mother. 
tarbiya this is the mother taken up allahumma arihi arihi wujuhu mu'misat oh allah show him the faces of prostitutes <laughs> show him the faces of prostitutes yari akad his mother says you know the problem with that idha ubbir waqa and if it's expressed words make real yani they make real they make real yani that's why the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhir fal yaqul khayran aw li yasmu whoever believes in allah ta'ala in the last day speak good or because you speak good yet waqa you want that to come through wa illa otherwise like what do you think happened to juraj he saw the face of prostitutes that's exactly what happened <laughs> that could go happen and not like 10 years later 1000 years later yani soon rather than later agada sees the faces of prostitutes sees even abi jamra hadith al bukhari the ibn abi jamra ma sha ibn abi jamra rada la anhu warda he even said but shof ibn abi jamra said shof look look he said look at the rahmat of the mother <laughs> he said the mother even when she's angry in a dua the dua mukhaffaf yani she just said show him the faces she didn't say anything worse than that the mother could have went further Jesus said, show him the face. And that's literally what happened. Juraj is inside of the souk. He has to go to the souk to get a few things he needs for his khalwa. He said, he's walking inside of the souk and he just walks past the prostitute. And you can imagine, media babies, it's that one moment, that little glance, and then a lower, just that glance. That's it. That's all that happens. They just walk past with a glance. I'm not saying the glance from Juraj, the glance from the prostitute. The prostitute just looks at him one glance and moves on. Sure, that's all it was. What transpires? The prostitute, people don't know, pregnant. She gets pregnant. You ain't mad. Are you pregnant there? Are you pregnant? So Bani Israel now, are you pregnant? Who's the father? Do you want to know the father? And so she says, Sahib Soma. It's what in Khawa there. It's what in Khawa. She used to remember that one moment in the souk when she saw your age and she the Tatahimia and now she accuses your age there. And they're like, oh, so that's what he's doing all alone. <laughs> it? That's what he's doing in privacy there. So Banu is right here now, how can they go? The mob now, the mob, whoa, whoa, whoa. the mob. They go to the Soma, to the Khalwa there of, of Juraj, and they smash it to smithereens. They're like, listen to Juraj, you, somebody you've never heard, never heard, never heard any bad about. But you're going to believe the rumor. You get the point? Like our age. Eh, hey, got to be true. Why? Facebook. He said it on Facebook. Gotta be true. Why? What, what's the word? TikTok tactic, whatever it is. What it is. These youngsters tell me now. Instagram. He posted it. And, and, and he got a million followers, so it's gotta be true. Got to be. I can't show. I can't. Who would believe that? Who would believe? You don't even hear the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi That amazing. That hadith amazing. A man will go out of his house. Will he tell him a kalima? Kevin, lie. He will speak a word that is a lie. And it reaches the entire horizons. Look at the Rasul. You, you say, oh, and it is. The Rasul speaks about social media and what have you. The social dilemma. The social dilemma there. Yeah, he's speaking about that. But look at it. Look at the, the dikka. A man will go beyond his house. What's go beyond his house? <laughs> like you see them, yeah. That he brought us with the mobile devices. Like the hadith about someone, a mobile device by virtue of which you can utter a word, shaf, we have local afaq. And you utter a word. And part of what the Rasul says, I'm telling you, don't think you've seen the full sense of it, yeah. Because you're not just talking about posting words. He said, he will utter a word. Like you will see this develop, like now you, you're going to see the, the text. It's going to become quote unquote pretty insignificant. The voice and the picture will become also prominent in social media. How can it? Because it's got a far greater impact than quote unquote type. Far greater. You get the point? A picture speaks a thousand words, Yanni. What about when it has a voice associated with it? Sure. Look at that. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be careful, Yanni. Be careful. Yanni, be careful, Yanni. Often be careful, yeah. Be careful of what you believe in the age of you get the point. What, what's the word they use? What's the lie? Oh, it's a what's, what's the word? Fake news. So fake news. 
isn't it? It's amazing how that's become like a, a term of currency, isn't it? The result of it's all fake news. <laughs> not at all. Like you think you're trying to be saying which is and which isn't. No, it's all fake news. Liars lie like a craft. They make it into a craft, a profession. I went to university. What did you study? Lies. Got a degree in lies. Doing a master's now. Master's. And, and I, I have good help postgraduate. I get a PhD in lies. <laughs> I get the age in which we're in, Yari. That's the age in which we live in. Liars, Yari. Liars. People experts, craft. You've got it down to a craft. Nasallah. Assalamu alaikum. And look at them, the mob. Or often, that's democracy, isn't it? The democracy in old Greek, it, it's the rule of the mob. That's what the democracy means. Demons gone crazy, Yari. Democracy, Yari. Smash up the soul map. Of sahib yani, of a man who's pure. Pure. Sure. And now to raise like what? What, what, what? Like why? I said, sure. I ain't do rage. No, I don't believe your age. Duration, tell me when the woman, tell me when the woman gives birth. When the woman gives birth now, your age goes to the baby. Who is your dad? <laughs> <laughs> That's we liar now, isn't it? He's gonna flex as we liar. Who's your dad? To the baby from the clay, the newborn baby. And the baby says, a rai, the shepherd. <laughs> the baby says the shepherd, daddy. It was the shepherd, daddy. The shepherd. The shepherd, daddy. You got the point. The shepherd. The shepherd should know better. As we know, in Tarabi, you're keeping the company of sheep, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that should have purified you so much. You should be sahib of Sakina, Yari. Not sahib of Mutmi Sahat, Yari. That's how Allah is sahib of The shepherd. <laughs> the shepherd. All right. Bani Israel, like, huh? <laughs> Baby speaking. But Shuf, you see the beauty of that? Look, Shuf. He chose God over his mother, Yari. And look how Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think, oh, well, he had all the tribulation. They smashed up it. Look at that tribulation. Higher degree with Allah Ta'ala. He was raised by that tribulation with Allah Ta'ala during there. And Banu Israel now, we will rebuild your khalwa, your soma, huh? in gold. They wanted to build him a gold house, a house made out of gold. He says, nah, <laughs> I was doing it for gold, daddy. Just make it the way it was, so I can be alone, away from you, ragamuffin, daddy. <laughs> away from you, daddy. I can be alone, daddy. I often worship and Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at creation. Look at creation, yani. Look at it. Nasar Allah salam wa lafia. Ya Rabbi id atayitahu fa abqihi. Ha'an gala wait. Wa alihi lal ula wa raqihi. Wa adhadan abati l'ida. Bi haqihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam. That's the word of Halima Sa'adiyah. Man hiya. Who was Halima Sa'adiyah? Radhi Allah anha wa radaha. So sure, this is meant to be a five minute introduction, to be honest, but it went the way it went. Look at it. أخون لي لم تلده أمي وليس من نسل أبي وعمي فديته من مخول وعمي فإن مهل لهم في ما تنمي Who is that? That's the words of Wahudhafa, Shayma, the daughter of Halima Sa'idiyah. The daughter. Young, yani. So, and look how the daughter helps the mother in raising the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the song she sings to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is my brother, not born of my mother, not of the blood of my uncle and father. Ransomed by the grace of my uncles through father and mother. So nurture him, O oh God, in the way that you alone nurture. Look for a young girl to be saying that. And, and, and you're like to your child. Goosey, goosey, ganda, where shall I wander? Upstairs, downstairs, in my lady's chamber. What you your lady's chamber? What lady's chamber? You speak upstairs, downstairs. That pure slavery there. Upstairs, downstairs. That's what I said that. You got the boy. Oh, Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? What black sheep? <laughs> what? That racist right there. Next time you see a black sheep, come and tell me. <laughs> Are you going to sing that inside of a song? Man, they're going to fill their songs with colonial, colonial imperial racism there. Sure. I would be like, Are you going to sing that to your child? And then you're going to say, why have you become so, so, so subservient? 
Do you understand that that which you sung to your child in the infancy, that was what created subserviences inside of them. That's what cast wah and weakness inside of them. that your child. That's why your child a coward. <laughs> coward, yeah. Hey, where did you get the cowardice from? From you? From you? You sang it to me when I was child, yeah. They quote to go the songs of quote unquote the sun never sets upon the British Empire. Yeah, right. Silly, I set it. Silly, I set it. Yeah, the Allah salam alafia. Forget that. Look what's been sung. Look what is being sung. Ya Rabbi abqi akhi Muhammada hata arahu yafi'an wa amrada thumma arahu sayyidan musawwada wa aktub a'adihi ma'an wal hasada wa aqbut a'adihi ma'an wal hasada wa ati izzan yadum wa abada sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My Lord, grant life to my brother Muhammad so that I see him as a grown lad and a young man. Then so I see him as a leader, a sayyid, a leader appointed by you, Ya Allah. Destroy all those that harbor enmity and envy towards him uh, and bestow upon him might, izzan, eternal. What type of young girl sings that song? Huh? And shuf. She ain't getting that from the book of nursery rhymes. She ain't singing from the song sheet or the nasheed sheet. That from Samin Kalbiha. That came from the depths of her heart, the depths of her soul. That's the profundity of those people chosen by Allah Ta'ala to raise an Asayyid Waladi Adam Wala Fakhar. Now, can you imagine that day, Hunayn, the Battle of Hunayn? And there's the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam victorious. One of the grand moments Allah Ta'ala preserves him in the Quran. And they come to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they say, Ya Rasulullah, there's a woman there who wants to, want, wants to address you, a captive. There's a captive who wants to address you. She's called for you. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do you mean, captive called for me? I'm going to go speak to a captive. What do you mean, woman? I ain't speaking to a woman there. Yeah. Without the Rasul, look at the Rasul. Labbaik. Labbaik. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Isn't that amazing? That day character, yani. You get the point? Characters of Ahlul Islam. It's, you know, it's like in, in Sharif al Sharif al Anam there. You get the point when the Jewish woman, the dream state, when she, she sees the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's your prophet? Do you think he'll answer me? Do you think he'll, he'll speak to me? Yeah, address him, he'll speak to you. So she addresses the Rasul Sallallahu and the Rasul says, Labbaik. Labbaik at your service. And she says, How would you address me with Labbaik at your service? When I'm not upon your deen. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that I never said Labaik to you until I knew that Allah Ta'ala and Allah Qad Hadaki. Allahumma salli wa sallim alayhi. I only said it when I knew God had already guided you. Labaiki. Look at the Rasul. But Labaik to a woman, daddy, a Jewish woman doesn't even know. Sure, he said to the woman in Medina, to Manoara, choose whatever street in Medina that you want to sit with me, and I'll meet you there. Any street. Shukr the Rasul We don't even know the name of the woman then. So the Rasul, it doesn't matter who you are male, female, free man, slave. It doesn't matter who you are. You go, yeah, if you call the Rasul, he responds. He responds, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he responds, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he goes to the woman. Sure. And as the Rasul now is inside to the woman, what a blessed moment. What does the woman say inside, at a distance? She says, Ya Rabbi abqi akhi Muhammada hatta arahu yafi'an wa amrada. How can she begin to say? And the Rasul, as soon as he hears that, the Rasul stops in his tracks and sits down. And the Rasul says, free her. Free her. It was Shayma. Look, all those years later, that was Shayma. Radullah wa radaha. Shayma. Yeah, six decades later. You with it? And, and one of the beautiful things about that six days, decades later, tell me that which you composed when you were a child that you could still remember. She composed this spontaneous when she's a child. Six decades later, she's still singing it to the Prophet. Six decades later, the Rasul it stops him in his tracks, Yani. 
makes him sit down upon the sons of Hunayn free here. Why? In the truest sense of the term, that is a free woman. Yani. That's a woman who's unshackled. That's a liberated woman. That's an emancipated woman right there. Shayma Hudafa radiallahu ta'ala anha wardaha. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, inshallah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala grants us tawfiq, jalla jalalu wa ta'ala ta'adhamatu. Tayyib, inshallah ta'ala, we don't want to keep you too late tonight, inshallah ta'ala. If you have any questions, inshallah ta'ala, then we're all good with your questions, inshallah ta'ala. Any questions? Yani, again, we don't misunderstand here. Yani, yesterday you mentioned that character is formed before five years, then outlived. I don't mean outlived. Yani, enveloped, we said. Yani, yani, it, it, it unfolds, <laughs> sorry, unfolds thereafter. So get the way it unfolds thereafter. In terms of Baluch Rushud, and it's somebody attaining the age of Rushud, Rushud, okay? A 40, can a person, or what does a person able to transform thereafter? No, no, Yari, Yari. Who you are, I, the potential of who you're going to be is sealed at 40. Then what unfolds thereafter is actuality, isn't it? It's like in, in science, you know, potential energy, energy, yeah, the kinetic energy, potential transforming into kinetic. Same way here, whoever you are, your capacity, yani, as, as a, Ibn, 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 Ibn Tufail, he says, he says, لا يتعد امرؤن جبلته قد قسمت في الطبيعة رتبه. Like Ibn Tufail and Andalus, he says, a human being cannot go beyond his tabi'ah, his inherent capacity. Yeah, in terms of inherent natures, Allah Ta'ala has made them disparate, has dispersed them, apportioned them amongst his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever you are in terms of capacity is sealed at five years of age. Dean teaches you that. Modern tell you that. They tell you that in psychology, they'll tell you at five years of age, it's sealed, yani, whoever the child is going to be. In terms of potentiality, in terms of capacity, Thereby you see a series of unfolding of your capacity into quote unquote reality, depending on context, environment, or what have you, to see what then can be transformed or unfolded into who you actually become, quote unquote. But all the potentials sealed by five years of age. Okay? Then if you ask about Baluga Rushdi, Balu, and yeah, of course it's the same for men and same for women, women. But if you ask about Baluga Rushd now at 40 years of age. At 40 years of age, there's no more enfoldment. You don't, have, there's nothing else. And at 40, you finish now. It's sealed, sealed, yani. Yani, i.e., your capacity is sealed at five, and your reality is sealed at 40. None. That's Imam Abdullah Haddad tells you that. Yani, forget it, yani. After 40 years of age, that's it. Whoever you, you are before the khalas, at 40, you are. There's no changing after the age of 14 and of itself. I gotta say Abdullah bin Ibn 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 Abdullah al Haddad Rahimullah bin Alawi. Allah Dad Rahimullah Ta'ala said. Okay, so make sure that like, we understand what's being said here, Yani, okay? I can remember character, khuluk, khuluk. Yani, like you, you actually think that you somehow you're, you're gonna be something different than what other Allah Ta'ala as well has ordained for you. And what Allah Ta'ala has ordained for you is imprinted upon the very fabric of your soul. Jalla Jalala wa ta'ala ta'ala matu, and then stamped it, sealed it at the age of five. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone got it? I hope we've got it. Yeah, the khuluk and the khuluk is your created reality. Okay, look at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 in the traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And nasu ma'adin. said, human beings are ores, we are minds. Kadhahab wal fiddha, like gold and silver. Shushuf, tell me, like gold, gold, innit? Does gold become plutonium? Gold, gold. It's gold. Gold is gold, gold. Yani khalas. But look at the, in Bukhari, the, the metaphor of the Rasul, we're minds, yani. Whatever our metal is, that's our metal. Fixed. 
Okay, bought the point, it's mine, so mine obviously means it's concealed. Sure, you, you got, you, we're not there yet because yeah, they shot the, the Euphrates will reveal a mountain of gold. The Prophet have told us that, yeah, it will reveal a mountain of gold. But ordinarily, gold ain't on the surface of a mountain. It's very deep, yeah, even like that mountain of gold, it's very deep in the Euphrates. And you get the point? Meaning you got, you got to now get, dig in to the mountain. Get into the mine in order to unearth the gold. And then have you ever seen raw gold debris? It don't look like that which you've got around your neck up on your finger that you shouldn't have because you're a man. <laughs> don't look like that, Yadi. Yeah, sure, it's yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to expose it to a bit of fitten, is it not? Uh, fit, you know what fitna means? It's how you take gold in its rawest form and now make it the gold that will that's what the word fitna comes from. And it needs to be exposed to fire, difficulty, tribulation. That's what allows the process of unfolding the capacities that lie within you. Okay, like the marshmallow. Johnny, <laughs> if you could just wait for that, okay, that's, a, no, that's not the biggest fitness for a child, daddy. But look what begins to unfold by virtue of that. Huh? So we've got it, Sharif, inshallah ta'ala. And the narration about Abu Ray say that he knew secrets if he told us. He would kill him. We could have no class the different secrets of Abu Huraira. Now look at that. There's a nation of Abu Huraira stating that he knew secrets. If he told us, we would kill him. Could you elaborate on that? I tell us what the secrets are. I don't, I don't make one. <laughs> if there's, you gotta, what's a secret if you tell it? Yeah, I mean. Are you ready? Uh, plus, where these secrets ever divulged to us? Yeah, the Sharif, there wouldn't be a secret. Raftab, leave that to Allah, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raftab, in general, the secret, it relates to two things. Fitan, tribulation at the end of time, haqqaiq, spiritual realities. And so leave those secrets to the people, yani, Allah's people. They're the, they're the custodians of it. That's why it was made secret in the beginning, yani. What does ruftum? Araftum? Do you understand? That's what Araftum means. It's not Ruftum. Like a Ruftumi there. And, and Araftum in Arabic means, do you understand? Uh, Hakada. Yeah, it's like this. That's what it means in Arabic. It tames. Aqib. May Allah Ta'ala bless you, inshallah Ta'ala, to learn the language of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, regarding reciprocity of love, that's going to be a sister who asks that one, isn't it? Many ain't going to ask about love. Many, many ain't interested in love, Yadi. Many ain't even interested in law, Yadi. Sure. Yeah, regarding reciprocity of love, we've always been told that the Prophet has loved us before we were even born and loves us more than we could act, that we can love each other. What do you mean in terms of re reciprocated love then? Reciprocated love is the love of wilaya. Yeah, I mean, there's different degrees of love. You get different degrees of love. And we are by virtue of the love of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we get the point, but we don't reciprocate just the degree of love that enables us in creation. That comes from the Prophet We don't even reciprocate that. That reciprocity of love towards the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that initial, yeah, it's called law. That's what law is now. Remember, law is all gratitude. It's all gratitude. But now that reciprocity of love towards the Rasul Sallallahu will create a higher reciprocity of love from the Rasul himself. That's wilaya. That's something different. And it's then you can really speak about love. Yeah. You get the point? I mean, you, you, one should recognize the degrees of love until you get to something that is far more profound. And maybe when you speak about profound love, you can't speak about anything beneath it as even being love to a degree. Okay, Ekad was speaking about. So, of course, the Rasul Sallam loves us. That's why it's difficult for the Rasul Sallam when, quote unquote, members of his ummah are sentenced to hell. That can only be an issue of love. If the Rasul Sallam did, 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 didn't care, didn't have a degree of love for us, then yani, shuf, that, that wouldn't be that wouldn't hit, harm the Rasul. Azizun alayhi ma amittum. Like whatever harms us is difficult for him. That, that comes from a heart of love towards his ummah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like I wouldn't take to my throne out of fear that my ummah will be sentenced to hell. Yeah, he only says they're sentenced to hell. Yani, they're the people of disobedience, ahlul kaba'i, the people of ma'asi. Yani. 
I will also see you on my Ummah will be sentenced to hell. Yeah, you speak about the greats, those who is love shone on, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, at the highest level, the reciprocity of love. But the fact that the Rasul Sahih will not sit because of his Ummah are going to be members, a great number, are going to be sentenced to hell, that's the basis of the love of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's being referred to here, yani. But what we're speaking about is the love of wilaya, yani. You get the point? That love, yani, like, like the love, that shuf, a lot of us, not only do we not have, yani, I know sometimes students say, oh, you're being a bit pessimistic and all that stuff, what have you. It's a type of love we will never have of the Rasul. Never have. We will never have it. I know some people don't like hearing, I don't know why, well, good. It's one of those statements, I pray, pray that I'm wrong. <laughs> I pray that I'm wrong. I pray that I'm wrong. So, but the reality of our lives, our lives show that meblog, there's a glass ceiling there. We ain't gonna go far beyond it, Yani. You get the point? We ain't gonna go far beyond it. So you, a lot of times we speak on love of the Rasul, etc. And what have you, Shof Kaif? Yani, person of Toba, person of Raja, person of Khauf, person of Sabah, person of Shukr, person of Tuwakul, person of Zuhud. After all of those, now we can speak about love. So look, look at the maqamat that we're gonna go through just to reach a degree of love. Like we haven't even become people of Toba, 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 which is the first door you enter into, yani, of the doors of safety, the maqamat of the religion, yani. Yani maqamat u tisun alayka bi hiftiha wa tahkimiha wabda bi tasahihi tawbati. Like Imam al-Haddad rahimahullah and the said, so we haven't, we haven't even badat na, we haven't even begun. Sure. And so it's, it's at that degree, the realization thereof, there you'll see reciprocity. the religion, yani. And again, these are already mentioned by our teachers that we strive and struggle. Then if religion was easy, then you would have saw it on the first generation, yani. Sure, like with everything they had, they gave, they gave everything, yani. everything. Everything, yani. everything. Everything, yani. we can't imagine that. Like we're still negotiating, Yani. You know, like, like, like they, Sheikh Ahmed, come, Hamza, come, 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 look, look, Eka, Eka, the rose, Hamza, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, take that. No, 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 Eka, we are, no, 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 Eka, there, even Hamza, hold on to Hamza, like that. Let go! Eka, there, we are, Yani. That's how we are with the world, Yani. Shuf, Eka, there, we are, Yani. You get it, Yani, Khalas. Then people gave unconditionally. And love is unconditional, yani. your true love unconditional. And you give everything, that's true love right there. And whatever you love in creation, Mars bars, Snickers, marshmallows, whatever they may be, yani, are often, it's only practice for true love. Whoever, whatever you love inside of life, you can say, why did Allah Ta'ala allow me to love these things in life and look, practice? So, so that you learn how to love. You get the point? Okay, that's all it is. Now you learn how to love. Okay, shuf. Now I'm ready to love. Now you're ready. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, only one being you can love. There, there, shuf. Hadha nabi al abtahi al athar. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadha nabi. That one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the one. Everything you've ever did in life in terms of love is practice for one reality. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. And you can't love after that, Yani. Sure. You think you're going to love your wife after that? Nah. <laughs> love you. Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, he married 30 women. Three out. 30 women. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, rahimahullah ta'ala. Sure. We've got to reach the 30s and the 100s, yeah. We've we, we got, we got, we got, we got a bit of work to do, Yani. We want to live like them people, Yani. So 30 people say there's women. But look at Umar ibn Khattab, that now, Umar Khattab, that's a man who can have 30 women. Umar ibn Khattab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, do you think I married them for women? Do you think I married women for women? Umar ibn Khattab, he said, I marry women nabi. for the love of the Prophet so that yawm al-qiyamah, you bet he be ana. And yawm al-qiyamah, the, the Rasul will boast about me with women, children, boast about me. So, he marries women because of his love of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa His teaching goes there. And no, the same for men, for women, don't think, oh, for men, what is he speaking about 30 women for? Whatever, whatever, whatever. But same with our women folk. Like, why should they marry? Oh, but I love him. <laughs> you love who, Yanni? I love him. I do. 
يعني لو فين وا يعني ما عم gonna disappoint you إك ما عم gonna disappoint you يعني look look at our beautiful daughter there isn't it like no I gonna marry no man I gonna what are the beautiful daughters said she said I'm not gonna marry no man why because he'll always let me down yes <laughs> yes I wonder she I wonder she was this this is like a 14 15 year old girl saying that. How beautiful is that woman? Is that young girl? How beautiful is she? Eh? Hamza, is that isn't beautiful there? Wouldn't you love your wife to be like that? Hey. Do you love me? Nah, don't love you. I love the Rasul. <laughs> would you love your wife? To, it would that would not be a beautiful statement for your wife to tell you Hamza today? It would be, isn't it? We ask it. Do you love me? Yes. Nope. <laughs> I love the Rasul. So that's why I love. Shof, and how difficult, Yanni, boy, Shof, akada, Yanni. Look, I'm gonna look how they teach us. Yeah, Yanni, you saying I can't love my husband? Of course you can love your husband. You saying I can't love my wife? Of course you can love your wife. Are you telling me it's not good to love my husband? No, no one's saying that. You said it's not good to love my wife? No, 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 nobody's saying that whatsoever. What we're saying is don't think in that degree. Shof, don't think. But the resource has some love, Daisha. One, you ain't the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa two, your wife ain't Aisha. You love Aisha because of Dean. Yeah, you did it. Like, she could have, with the Rasul of Aisha, could I ask you a question? Do you love Aisha? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, you suppose what? Well, yeah, of course you suppose so. We love Aisha because of Dean. We love Khadija because of Dean. You love Fatima because of Dean, yeah. You know, the great Imam al Jasus, rahimahullah ta'ala, al Jasus, you have a Jasus. He says, Shuf, you know the hadith of Amzara there, Amzara in Bukhari Muslim. Jesus, when he looks at the, um, the issue of Umzara, when Umzara, the great woman of Zara there, which at the end, which he says uh, about a second husband, and you got the and all the, the beautiful treatment he gave her and what have you. But yeah, and she always remembers Abu Zara, and then everything my husband, my second husband gave me, doesn't even of, of goodness, and he was a good man. It doesn't even equate to a utensil, a fork, a knife of Abu Zara. Sure, like people like she ungrateful or what, Yani? Of all the good that that man did for her, she is comparing him to a first husband, and she said all the good that he did for me doesn't even compare to a single utensil of what Abu Zara, my first husband, did. Shuf. And then the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says that Aisha, oh Aisha, I am to you like Abu Zara is to Um Zara. Illa la utaliquki, but I won't divorce you. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says Aisha. Now look, Imam al Jasus Rahim says a very interesting thing. And I know I'm a bit off, but it's tied to be an issue of love, yani. But here, Imam al Jasus, he says, Radiallahu anhu warda. This is the re look at him. He says, This is the reason why a man should never marry a woman who's been married before. That's what he says. A man should never marry a woman who's been married before. No, no, we'll get into the discussion, but it's a different discussion. But then he says, I know you're going to cry foul. You're going to go, Oh, cry foul. How are you going to cry foul? Look at the Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of his wives, with the exception of Aisha, had been married previously. Every single wife. So how are you saying that a man should not? You know what he says? He says, well, he's the Rasul. <laughs> Those women have to love him by the dictates of religion. Don't start comparing that type of love. What woman would, ma what woman would marry the Rasul وسلم, and be thinking about a previous husband? He said, you haven't understood anything about that. Yani, sure. There are women who, who, yani, women who when they were told that they were married to the Rasul their first instinct is to prostrate. Zainab bin Jahsh. Their first instinct is just to give everything away. Oh God. Yani, um Habiba. Their first instinct is to die. There's a woman who's reported that the Rasul Sallam married her. When she heard she was married to the Rasul Sallam, she died on the spot, Yari. Died. How can they bring Yari? Show up, you can, yari, inshallah. You're going to see it inside the light of the eyes, Yari. She died on the spot. 
but she hates you with Malik al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Yani, 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 please, yani. Raftum. Oh, we're all good, inshallah. We've got that. What is the minimum required to remove one veil? And does it need to be conscious? Yani, we leave those type of questions to imma. That type of question, ask Habib Amr. Raftum. We're all masakir, yani. Oh, we're all, we're all masakir. Show off, yani, Habib Amr. That's, that's the type of question. Quote unquote, you give to the ras, the, the rusakh. But what you understand, if you're talking about one veil, that's sharia. Remember the beginnings of the veils, the veils, when the 49,000, the beginning of the veils, that's what the law does. The law helps you remove veils between you and Allah and subhanahu wa ta'ala. I roughed them, I roughed them, but the bigger question to us, if you're talking about their beginning veils, what, the end veils, those, that's for the rusakh. And people like Habib Ahmad, and Allah Ta'ala preserve him and preserve his life. I mean, companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have similar ranks in terms of greatness. Do the companions of the Prophets? No, the companions of the Prophets. Do they have similar rank to the greats compared? No. The companions, just like our Prophet is the greatest of the prophets. Okay? Note, great, what do you mean the greatest of the prophets? The greatest, but not on a continuum of greatness. And that's with Adab. Everyone got it? Like, don't think the Rasul is like, yani, sure, all you football mad men. Don't think the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is top of the Premier League, yani. And somebody came second, a runner-up. There's no runner-up with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no runner-up. Yani, with, he's in a league of his own. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Akada, Nubuwa is a very distinct and unique reality. And we would go as far as saying, Ibrahim is in a league of his own. Don't think Ibrahim is what he's the top of those who, who the runner-up. Same with Musa, same with Isa, same with Nuh, with the great five. You get the point, Yani, for saying that Ibrahim is in a league of his own, alayhi islam, but his league is not like the league of the Rasul, alayhi wa sallam. For saying that Musa is in a league of his own, but his league is not like the league of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. For saying that Isa is in a league of his own, but his league is not like the league of Sayyidina Musa, alayhi salam. Nuh in a league of his own, his league is not like the league of Isa, alayhi salam. Everyone got it? And so now, what you, what you, what's the question? The companions of the Rasul, alayhi wa sallam, they're in a league of their own. Don't compare them to the companions of any other prophet. Don't compare them, yani. They're in a league of their own, yani. The companions of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani, yani, men, men ansari Allah. Nahnu ansar Allah. Look, look at Jesus when he addresses the Hawariyun. And who am I ansar for the sake of Allah Ta'ala? Nahnu ansar Allah. Okay, look, the disciples said, Nahnu ansar Allah. Look at Allah Ta'ala. By the end of the verse, the Rasul, for asbahu zahirina. And so thereby they became manifest. Look at Allah Ta'ala there. Who became manifest? Not, the, not, the ansar, not Jesus' Ansar, the Rasul's Ansar. Look, it's, it's called Iltifat in the Quran. The Quran shifts from speaking about the, the disciples of Jesus, but the ones who were great and were manifest were not the disciples of Jesus. They're the disciples of Muhammad. Don't compare anybody. You're going to compare to Fatima Zahra, alayhi salam. Who are you going to compare to Khadija, Who are you going to compare to Aisha, Who are you going to compare to Hafsa? Who are you going to compare, yani? The Ruqayya to Who are you going to compare? The great women, the great men. You can't compare anyone to them. Not before them, not after them. None. So as we think, oh, yeah, they're the best of the Ummah of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, they're the best, period. A league of their own, radiallahu anhum. Okay. Yeah, and I know of somebody who described nearly losing their sanity in order to see the Prophet in his dreams. They cried themselves to sleep every night, losing appetite for food and dunya in general, as they fell in love with him, so I in deep pain for not being with him. If that's the case, just to see him in a dream, how intense does love have to be in order to see him in a wake state? Yeah, blessed, yani, may Allah Ta'ala bless such people, inshallah Ta'ala, who have that type of shawk for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Often that state is made easier for Ahlullah. That often describes a person who's not in the presence of the people of God. That day. It often describes a person who's not in the presence of the people of God. And so that person is to make it a bit easier upon them, is that yani, khalas, at a greater degree of facilitation, get to God's people, get to Allah Ta'ala's people, the big people, the outad, yani, those who, who peg the earth, who anchor the earth, yani. Get to them, often, because often in the heck of the spirituality, often all of that, yani, all of that toil and struggle and shuf, 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 often is when you yourself, you get the point? That's you, 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 you. Yeah, like, be, be, be. 
You ready? Imam is there. Yani, you know, lean on me. Hakadari Imams, lean on me. And that makes the spiritual struggle exponentially easier, yani. Exponentially. You know, big people carry lesser people. Okay? In the cone. Hakadari is, yani. Okay? What would you advise for someone who sees a lot of dreams that have meaning but isn't able to interpret or find and interpret? Can we learn the science of dream interpretation on our own and what works? Yeah, the basis of the science of dream interpretation is of the sciences of mohiba. It's, it's a science of mohiba. Mohiba means it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some either you're either born with it or you're not. That's the basis of the science of dream interpretation. Okay? And so Allah alam. And meaning, life is about the pursuit of meaning, i.e. the meaning of life. And life is about the pursuit of meaning. If the dreams mean that much to you, like we mentioned the, the, the dream of the Mubidan, from the Mubidan to Nu'man ibn Mundir, from Nu'man ibn Mundir to Abdul Masih, from Abdul Masih to Satih. Look, shush, shush. look, all, because the dream meant that much of the Mubidan. But look, it goes through three people to get the interpretation. Everyone got the point? If it means that much to you, find Allah Ta'ala's people. And Allah Ta'ala, we got, we have to have that type of discussion, yani, because us in, in, in the West, we are comfortable in the backyard, yani. We're comfortable, if you can call it the backyard, we're comfortable. You were there, and what I mean, yani, show if Allah Ta'ala's people there, then alhamdulillah, no doubt, yani, a lot of them are in hiding, a lot of them are in hiding, and I don't mean in hiding, like, <laughs> I just mean they're in the, you get the point, they're musturin, yani. they're just hidden, yani. a lot of Allah Ta'ala's people. But there's enough of them who, who are known, who have manifest and who are accessible. Yani. And so access Allah Ta'ala's people, and that's, that should be an essential part of our tarbiyah. Because a lot of times that we speak about religion, and we speak about it outside of the context of God's people. And we're trying to interpret and practice religion outside of their context. Yani, from a perspective, it's like, quote unquote, as yani, it's like, Speaking about religion outside of the context of the Nabi. Remember, they say the Imams of the age, in relation to you, it's as if they're the Nabi. That's what the Imams of, of Haqqaiq and Raqqaiq, they tell, it's as if, because why? They, they, is Wurafa. they inherit the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you know him through them. Anyone who tells you something else, they're mistaken, يعني. They have no independent access to the Prophet وسلم, except by Al Isnad ibn Adin, except by the Musnidun. Yani. Shof, Araftum. And so we here in the West, we have to reconfigure how religion is practiced. And those people like who are not here, they're not here. I don't care you in Blackburn, Burnley, or Bolton. <laughs> I don't care where you are, yani. No. But the Sheikh of, of the of mosque, not to say mosque, you don't say my mosque, you don't say the Sheikh of Mosque. The Sheikh of Mosque, yani, he says, whatever the Sheikh of Mosque says, yani, you get that, whatever the Sheikh of Mosque says, you get the point. God's people in the truest sense, and some of the Zahirina could be the Mastur, but the Zahirina, the Nahia. And in the Mastur, in the lands of Kufr, please, please, in the lands of Kufr, yani, yani, shof, please, yani. <laughs> like one time it was hilarious with a Fakir, and it was a Daras. Because somebody, somebody was 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 in 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 in, in Ahl al Kisade in Karim in Dar al Mustafa. Somebody was making mention of the West. Yeah, some people the West. New York, New York. I kind of people like the West, yani. And you know, some people go, and then Habib Abu Gatsu people go, what where? <laughs> I go, what where? Have you ever said Ulama Auliya there? Have you ever said no? The people of God are here. Have you ever was like no? Nah. Allah didn't cast his people there. Allah has too much ghair for his people and for the lands of Iman. Too much, make sure we don't get this twisted here. You know what I mean? Something has gone wrong. And I mean, I'm trying to be in, in, as gentle as possible, but something has gone wrong when we're living in these lands. Don't think it's like gone right and we're gonna make it all right. And Olive Mount, yes. <laughs> Yeah, the point. Ding. I mean, it's gonna be. Don't think it's like that, Yadi. We're just trying to arrange a tent in the backyard, Yadi. That's what we're trying to do. But the backyard and the backyard until the coming of the Mahdi, it's gonna remain a backyard. Shuf, that that there, Yadi, Don't 
I'm not trying to be pessimistic. The night of Juma, it's a nice night. Fakir feeling in a state of bust right now, you know, you get the point. Nice night. But shof kalab, yani. You gotta be real at the same time, yani. You with it? We gotta be real. We gotta be real. But often we gotta take out of our hearts, quote, or any attachment to the to, to lands that are not lands of faith, yani. We gotta take that out of our hearts, yani. You with it? And we love a land because of its connection to faith and to God's people. You get the point? You love a land. Anytime you go to a Muslim land, as soon as you get off that plane, out that car, off that train, whatever it may be, prostrate. Prostrate. How to shukr to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala has brought you to a land of faith there. Those lands special to the Lord Jalla Jalala wa Ta'ala. Special. Lands of disobedience. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Thamud there. At Thamud. When they reached Ar Thamud there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muru, Muru, Muru. <laughs> <laughs> get across, they get across quickly. Sahaba getting water. Nobody drink from the water. Look at nobody drink. Throw out. Give it to your animals. Like you know, waste water. Give it to your animals to drink. But nobody drink from it. Nobody make wudu from it. Shof the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Land that have been touched by kufr there. Look how the Rasul treated such a land. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yani khalas. Or often akada din. Raftum. Yani, the Prophet didn't need food, but he ate food. He didn't need water, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he drank water. And he was sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he was breastfed. But he didn't need milk. You get the point? Same thing there. But remember, that milk wasn't from the breasts of those women. We established that in the beginning. That's why Halima said it's clear that her breast was empty. Then when the Rasul goes towards it, it fills up. You call this Tafa'alatul Qawn bin Nabi. Tafa'alatul Qawn bin Nabi. How the universe reacts to the very want of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the world of intermediaries. But in reality, there's no universe. There's just God. And that's why Aisha radiallahu anha wardaha says, Ma li ara rabbuka yusarif al hawak. What is it I see that your Lord flows through your very desire? Flows. I mean, whatever he wants, instantaneously there. For the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the world of intermediaries, tafa'ulatul qawm bin nabi. You see how the world reacts to the very want of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That they're deep. Allah and the Fakir, that they're deep. Why, why is it deep for the Fakir? It's like, sure, when we, yani, when we find ourselves not reacting to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yani heading towards the Rasul it's like a sign he doesn't want us. You ready? Really? Because when he wants something, it comes to him. You get a point? When he wants something, sorry, that comes to him. And you're coming to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is one of the greatest signs he wants you. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Halima Sa'adi's family are not Jews, okay? They're Arabs. The Arabs are not Jews, okay? The Arabs are not Jews. And again, they're Arabs. And what's, what's more so understood, understood that you're dealing with what dominates is shirk. They're mushrikeen, they're idolaters, okay? That's what dominates. But within that, you have people of Hanif Unafa. Yani, yani, look, we live in an age of kufr. But within that kufr, you have people of faith. So, yeah, you get the point. So you could, like, within the city of Liverpool here, it's a sea of kufr inside of Liverpool. But within it, there are houses of Noor and individuals of Noor. That's shak, yani. That exists. So now when we look back at history, you say we jump, quote, unquote, not like we got 100 years, but whatever you jump on, you look back at Liverpool, you're not going to say, oh, it was all kufr, so they were all kufar in there. You get the point? You can understand rules have exceptions. And so likewise, okay, I can understand the age of Jahiliya. It's a sea of kufr, of the most deepest and profound kufr the world's ever had, that which the Prophet Sallallahu engaged. But within that, afraad individuals, there are people, mashallah, tabarakah, with deep and profound faith. And they're the ones Allah Ta'ala is choosing for the world for the reason, Jalla Jalala wa Ta'ala For that very reason, they're his people. Chosen by God, Jalla Jalala wa Ta'ala how did we lose the norm of having wet nurses, which was part of our tradition so badly? How did we lose it? Because we live in the backyard. <laughs> if you go to the, to the pure lands, the tradition is still there. It's still there. You get the point? 
It's still there. Like my daughter has a wet nurse because she's born in, in the pure land, yeah. She has a wet nurse, yeah. You get the point? That, that's the purity of lands, yeah. So it, it, it hasn't been lost. We've been lost. We are lost, yeah. Okay. Samara Boo. Where is Baraka Um Ayman um, um, buried? Medina, Madinia, Radiallahu Anha Wadaha. About um, Sayyida Maryam and Sayyida Asiya alayhi salam attending the birth of the Prophet وسلم, is a fabrication. Okay, is it true or is it da'if? Please clarify. Yani, clarification, it's in the books of Sirah. And as we mentioned yesterday, these are the father of the religion in and of itself. You got the father. You got the point. The imams of what? Of a hundred thousand excess. And that's the fakir end of story. It's issue of Dalil here. And it's not going to be like, oh, well, the, the muhaddithin and, and the imams of Sirah have different criteria. Well, the muhaddithin themselves have different criteria in terms of what they accept and what they reject. It's like when Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, placed the hadith inside of his book. That's a sign of acceptance, right? When Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj placed the hadith inside of his book, that's a sign of acceptance, right? Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Imam Abu Dawood, etc. So what about when Ibn Hishaq, a man of 100,000 a hadith places it inside of his book. Sign of acceptance, right? Remember these Imams married, memorize as many a hadith as the Bukharis and the Muslims of the world. Okay, make sure we understand. And they're muhaddithin. They recognize as Imams of Hadith, Rahimullah Ta'ala, although they become more famous for the science of Sirah. And that they, mashallah Ta'ala, it's like their science. You're not gonna mention um, Sirah without mentioning Ibn Ishaq. That they're like the, like the, the grandfather of Sirah in these traditions, radiallahu anhu wa radaham, okay? And so the narration about Maryam and Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyidina Asiya, radiallahu anhu wa radaham, akadha mentioned. Yani, um, Ijaz, yani, the Prophet you will not believe until you love me more than, more than anything. What's the reason Prophet has attached the Imam, Iman to his love and then prayer, fasting, etc., as they are indications of love? I don't really get the question, Yani, but Allah Ta'ala, Alam Hakad Allah Ta'ala, Ratab, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and the faith is from God, Yani, and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala predicates that faith upon the love of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That day in Ikhlas. And the reason should be obvious there. What would you recommend singing to children instead of nursery rhymes? Some nursery rhymes teach colors, animals, numbers. Teach what color? Like what, 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 what nursery rhyme teaches colors? And what I'm trying to say, red is red, blue is blue. Yeah, okay, red. Yeah, what, what? Like the child's not gonna grow up and know what red is. The child's not gonna grow up and know what blue is. Yeah, if you get the point. We have to look at some of the nursery rhymes. If, 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 if there was ever a, a definition for stupidity, you'd find teaching kids the obvious, isn't it? Red is red, blue is blue. You get the point? There's no bad more stupid than you. And that's what I would say, Gary. I don't child. Come on, Yani. And so, Yani, Allah Ta'ala, Alam, Yani, how can that? We've got to realize that you know, our tradition is something very, very different. You're really very different. You get the point. Like if you go to if you if you go to look at Ibn Said and Nas, Rahimullah, look at these type of people. They are four years old, so they're doing the shifa and six years or qad ayyad and what have you. You know, like you know, imams, you know, you're blessed to engage them again this month, like the like to them, Sheikh Mohammed bin Easter, memorizing the Burda that what you know, you know, their nasty rhymes are what Amin Tarakuri Jiranindi. These are learning. Huh? Out of them, look at them, yani. Honestly, the fakir, like we're all sitting there with Ya Rabbi Salli Ala Muhammad. Yeah. I remember once, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, it always made me smile, yani. Go back to the West. So once we had a gathering, we had a gathering in Tarim, yani. We had a gathering, and we invited him. <laughs> we invited, yeah, the Habib Abdullah bin Muhammad bin Alawi, yani. Bin Shihab, yani. Imam, Ayn al Tarim. We invited him to the gathering. So he's going to hold the gathering for all those group of ragamuffins in the West, Yani. So we're all around Habib, Habib. So we're going to have like a mole. He's going to give us some wind. Habib, the Imam, Rahmatullah, Pascal. So it's mole time. He said, so what mole? He said, Dia Labe. Dia Labe. That's the only mole we know. We don't know any of the mole about, apart from Dia Labe. 
And in Tarif, they know every molar that's ever been ever been composed, Yani. And they learn that by children. You go into the grand molar, Sharif and Anam, but you go to all of that, Yani. They're like half asleep and singing that. The children. You with it? I mean, they they raised upon that which raises godly people, Yani. You with it? MashaAllah tabarakallah. Are often hakada. And 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 would that, Yani, Allah Ta'ala Alam. You know, that would be blessed. You know, I mean, you get the point. It would be blessed. Like, what are you? I'm a nursery nurse. I'm a manager of a nursery. Oh, me, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. I teach children. Look how it should be beautiful if the nursery nurses and the managers of nurseries and teachers and whatever it is may be. You start like, sure. You get the point? Yani, like, pulling together words that raise, really raise from our tradition, Yani. Oh, that's now when we're perfecting our craft. That's when the impact is. Yo, but often look at our teachers. That which you teach them at that age. Look at how you call them. You say, how you call them? Said, the children teaching the miracles of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They just as far connected to the miracles. He said, when they're young there. And he said, now when they grow up and they go to, you put them in the midst of kufr. He said, their, their faith is unshakable. Because yani, you're not, you know, it's a miracle, it's, 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 it's the doe speaking, it's the bird speaking, it's the camel speaking, it's that. Yani, and you think, oh, it's, mm, yeah, no, nur, ala nur. It's, it's enveloped in light, yani. But that enters into the heart of the child, like manar, there's like this protective covering on the heart of the child, and it khalas. They are never ever going to stay to this fully. Akada we need Yani and raise what we need. And what Nasi Ram? Ah. Nasi Ram. And Ashid Yani. Meaning powerful of Allah Ta'ala, of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlillah, of the people of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So Hakada Radi Allah and how often you hear the great texts of the religion that we teach in the madrasa as an example, Ajurumiya. And Ibn Ajum wrote it for children. He wrote it for children. How often do you hear that about text? You get the, you get the point. Of which it filled in. And I'm in the Fakhir with going to Tarinat Akada, you know, when they're all, you know, every text they've got, look, Abda Bismillah wa Rahmani wa Bi Rahimi Daima Lisani. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I mean, they're singing a nursery rhyme. But the meanings, mashallah ta'ala. Look, look at our group there, Rayhan. Allah wujud qidam baqa. Mukhalafatuhu lil hawadithi Qiyamuhu binafsihi That's the attributes of God they're singing, Yani. But you think they're singing like just so just nice nasheed, Yani. And it's attributes of Allah. Look at that imprinted upon a child. Yani, khalas. You don't need to compose in this Iran. They've already been written. They've already been written and they raised. And they've got, mashallah ta'ala, 1,500 years of already raising them. And yani, you just need to collate, okay? Not create. Because scholars mention it's in their poetry and when mentioning the molid, so how do you reconcile? Okay, and obviously that goes back to something before, but I'm not understanding. On the topic of wilaya, did the companions experience fana and baqa? Okay, yeah, yeah, very powerful words, isn't it? Anas, Raftub, yeah, Raftub, inshallah ta'ala. Shaykh, we could listen to you talk about the Rasul all night. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't listen to myself. I'd rather, I'd rather just be quiet, yeah, Raftub, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, they protect you and keep you in the midst. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have heard and another scholar talk about the incident, the incident of Baraka drinking the urine of the Prophet. He said, that it was unintentional, okay. And that the prophet I'm discouraged it, okay. Is that right? Okay. The scholars still acknowledge that Baraka benefited from it, okay. And did not suffer stomach pains after that, okay. Salam, Sheikh. You mentioned that whatever metal is in your mind, that is what is mine. But then, don't we have alchemists, men of God, that can take a person's metal and transform it into gold, transform lesser souls into higher souls? There's a deeper, deeper meaning there. Yeah, the point is that that is, that is. They are few and far between. They're few and far between. And they're of the Barzakh. It's like Imam, Ahmed, like Imam Abdurrahman al-Sakhaf 
He said, look at a sakaf there. He said, in the Zemba, there are 40 people who flip a person's metal. They take a person who's, who's shaki and they make him into Sa'id. In, but he said, in the Zemba, look, a sakaf, the great sakaf, the second greatest Imam of the valley there, radiallahu anhu wa dani, but he said, every one of them in the Zemba. Zemba, if you don't understand, they're buried. They're from the Barzakh, yani, radiallahu anhu wa dani. That they can, they can flip a person's metal. Sure, they can flip a person's metal. Okay, the question now is, whose metal did they flip? First, recognize that it's miraculous and it's given to what the elite of Ahlul Khususiyya, of the elect, of the religion of the Rasul, mm -hmm. that's one. Then you've got to ask the question for you, whose metal did they flip? You got to ask that, whose metal did they flip? Ahlullah, the people of Allah Ta'ala, they say when they arrive at destiny of Allah with Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, with disposal, they have the ability to flip destiny, they don't touch it out of adab with Allah Ta'ala. Because Allah Ta'ala wrote it that way for a reason. <laughs> Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That these are people of amana, the umana, that's who they are, radiallahu anhum wa rdahum. So yeah, yani, yani, let's say hypothetically, so I don't mean hypothetically, that it's not real, it's real. Disposal is real. But if it happens, it's the rarity of a rarity. You get the point? You get the point? Yani it, it, it's like yani, Baqaratun Safra. It's the yellow cow, Banu Israel, Surah al Baqara. You get the point? It's, it's that type of rarity. Yani. Whenever you see a yellow cow, come and tell me. Do you get the point? Nah, so that yellow cow can happen. It's the it's Quran, yani, Baqaratun Safra. Okay, so everyone got it? Same here, Ahsan, Ahsanta. And in regards to drinking the urine of the Prophet, is it blameworthy to have this yearning? Is there any limit to have an extreme love for the Prophet Sallallahu And there can't be no limit to have an extreme love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No limit, yani, of that. Okay, how can I love, yani? Look at the point. Okay, how does one keep to a rod of Salawat and be consistent? Small increments, always start small. The best of all deeds are those that are consistent, even if they're small. And so the sir is small, okay? Always small. Don't go for the big awrah. Don't go for the big salawat of the Rasul Sallallahu Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Allahumma salli alay, Allahumma salli alay, Allahumma salli alay, Allahumma salli alay, Allahumma salli wa sallam 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 alay. How can something as simple as that and keep upon that? Sure, until you any khalas, capacity now unfolds and then thereby inshallah go to something slightly bigger, lengthier. Then, and then, and then. Raft akada, yani, inshallah ta'ala. None is a true until the Rasul sallallahu is more beloved to him than anyone in creation okay what does this mean and how does it manifest in today's age inshallah ta'ala so I, I think we've sort of made mention of that but i'm, I'm sort of conscious of the time inshallah ta'ala enough one for the questions that remain does anyone here who's present have any present questions inshallah ta'ala any of you who are present Hello. say again no, it's not necessarily a comparison now. The, the Imams speak about that, yani. even the argument of, of in the works of the Imams, theology in particular, about our aql and ilm went into a debate. Yani. Yani. If you're going to ask for well, what's higher, ilm is always going to be higher than aql. Akal is the upshot of the argument. Why? Because ilm is attributed to Allah Ta'ala, whereas aql is not. You get the point. That ilm sifam is sifati. And knowledge is a sifr of Allah Ta'ala. And aql is not. If it's not aql. If it's not idraq, even if someone says, well, what about sifat al-idraq? Which, which, you could, which you could, you could maybe more loosely translate as, as um, the attribute of intelligence, of supreme intelligence, intelligence, God. I remember the first thing you would say, well, sure, yeah, the standard teaching and theology, nobody yuthbit, nobody affirms sifat al-idraq in terms of standard orthodox teaching. Although within the orthodox, orthodox schools, like the Ash'aris and others, the other imams would say, for instance, the eighth sifa which is called the sifa of idraq, which we planted as intelligence. Yani, but yani, khalas, even even then, it's an issue of dispute. You know, there, with ilm, there's no dispute. So ilm higher, yani, ilm higher. 
Okay? Allah Ta'ala Ala. Bo meblag. What's important is in terms of knowledge, often, often, in terms of espousing knowledge, espousing knowledge, one has to be careful that yani khalas, that you're not espousing knowledge through intelligence with that which you can't truly comprehend. You got my point? Like I, your, your intelligence should show you where you cap, quote unquote, your knowledge, even if your knowledge supersedes it. That's what Imam Subki was also referring to. There are people who are speaking, yeah, they quote unquote, based upon knowledge, but they don't have the intelligence to truly understand what's being said. And so thereby what happens is they espouse opinions that contradict the truth. That's the danger. That's what Imam Subki Rahimullah Ta'ala was what was referring to. So. And Wahab ibn Munabbi. Yeah, yeah, he was a rabbi of the Jews, who was Muslim, Tabi of the Imam the Tabi'in from Yemen, and your land. Or at least you say you're from there. But Belzebub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, where? Yeah. Uh, where? Yeah. Way. Yeah. They're weighing in terms of where? <laughs> Rank, degree with Allah Ta'ala. So they weigh them against a ten of his ummah. Yeah, in terms of their worth, they rank with Allah Ta'ala and the Rasul outweighs. It's like the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Abi Bakrin. If the faith of Abu Bakr was to be weighed against the faith of the Ummah, the Rajah. The faith of Abu Bakr would preponderate, would outweigh the, the faith of the Ummah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Any other questions, ma'am? Intelligence versus truth. Intelligence. Yeah, I mean, you could say intelligence can be increased from a degree, yes, but we wouldn't say intelligence is decreased, is increased. You get the point? You get there? There. No, yeah, what the what the, the fakir is saying here, it's, it's, the, it's the discussion today, is that your the, the, yeah, your intelligence, remember, like when we speak, like students ask here as an example, the issue of of of, of, of character being sealed at what? A sealed at five years of age. Like what does actually mean your character sealed at five years of age, et cetera, yeah, your capacity in terms of character? Well, character is intelligence. Character is 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 um, anger. Character is what is ego, nafs. Character is like balance or just balance or what have you. So they, that seal that five years of age. So like someone says, well, I can increase my intelligence. No, your intelligence can be unfolded. Your intelligence can be sharpened. Your talent, but it's not subject to change. And you get the point. And and so so some but sometimes you have better and sometimes it's like you you think you're increasing something. You get the point? Like sometimes you think, look, I was selfish, but now I'm generous. But you always have the capacity to be generous. You get the point? So exposing yourself to specific environments, specific habitual practices, they now unveil and fold the capacity to be generous. That's why in, in Tasawwuf you differentiate between khuluq and adab. Khuluq and adab. Okay, like an example, we use both as character, but they're not both character in the truest sense, yeah. You did and so adab, not in the Quran, it's not in the Quran whatsoever. So in the Quranic thing, but khuluk is so the madar al khuluk. So everything revolves around khuluk. Khuluk is your metal. So then what's adab? Adab is like the process to reveal your metal. Remember, adab means to do something habitually. It's like a mind, goes inside of a mind. How do I get the gold out of a mine? I've got to do something repeatedly, dig over and over and over and over and over again in order to reveal that gold. How can that the same in terms of the character, the khuluq that we have inside of us? So the adab is like this environment that we expose yourself to an environment. I know we don't see it like as an example, somebody as an example, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we see, um, what's it called? What are they called? Um, sheep. Rai, shepherds, yeah, he's not there, subhanAllah. The shepherd, the shepherd's my dad. With the Rai there, the Rai, and look at the point, sheep. The Rasul says, whoever's with sheep, they get sakina wal waqar. They become people of tranquility and people of composure. 
high, really high quality. You mean they didn't have it and now they get it? No, no, no. It means it was in them, but the sheep unveil it. They reveal it. You get the point? What's the adept? What am I doing over and over and over again? By being with sheep, that's the repetition. By raiding sheep, that's the repetition. Have I got the point? Yeah, when we're in an, yeah, what I'm saying tonight, we don't see. When I'm in an environment, something is happening to you over and over and over again. Although you may perceive it to be still, it's not. You are repeatedly exposing yourself to an environment. That exposition, that environment, that's the adab, which is now digging away, quote unquote, at all of the muck of the surface of your mountain, yani, until now the mind is revealed and it comes out. Same way with bad character traits. Because like what mind, quote unquote, of precious metals you go into, save that there's, there's also toxins in there. It can be very dangerous minds as well. I mean, there are, there are not so nice things inside of minds where the most precious things exist. And so the, the nature of khuluk is the, yani, the minds of human people. Yani, hasana sayya, but you must on air the, the, the hasana, the good inside of you, and keep contain the bad inside of you. That's the process of tarbiya right there. Okay? Any questions? Who? Yeah, Allah Ala, but um Amen old, yani, old, and old. Allah and dimension, I think in the nineties, in Um Amen, but Allah and her word. In the nineties, in Um Amen, but she was old, yani. Any questions? You have any questions? Mu'affaqeen, jazakum Allah khair, inshallah ta'ala, tawfiq. Allah ta'ala bless you all, inshallah ta'ala, excuse. The bad adab, inshallah ta'ala. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.